In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What is this guy? But the earth became waste, hell right, and emptiness and darkness was on the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was brooding upon the surface of the waters. <laughs> and God said, let there be light. And then there just was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, even though darkness is just not light. Idiot. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. How do you separate the waters from the waters? <laughs> Idiot. And God made the expanse and separated the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout grass, herbs yielding seeds, and fruit trees bearing fruit according to their kind, with their seed in them upon the earth, and it was so. And yet, the earth brought forth grass, herbs yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with their seed in them according to their kind, and God saw that it was good again. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, Let there be light bearers in the expanse of heaven to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be light bearers on the expanse of heaven to give light on the earth, and it was so. And God made the two great light bearers, the greatest light bearer to rule the day, and the lesser light bearer to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of heaven to give light on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living animals, and let birds fly just above the earth, in the open expanse of heaven. And God created the great sea, creatures, and every living animal that moves, with which the waters swarmed according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that, let me guess, it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living animals according to their kind, cattle and creeping things, and animals of earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the animals of the earth according to their kind, and the cattle according to their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth like creepers from Minecraft. <laughs> and God created man in his own image, and in the image of God he created him male and female, he created them. I feel like there was meant to be a full stop there, but apparently these idiots who wrote the Bible can't even do that. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heaven, and over every living thing that moves upon earth. God isn't even real. <laughs> And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be for you as food. And to every animal of the earth, and every bird of heaven, and to every thing that creeps upon the earth, in which is a living soul, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was the evening, and there was the morning. The Sixth Day! <laughs> Chapter 2 Thus the heavens and the earth and all their host were finished. And on the seventh day God finished his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done, because he's lazy and not real. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made, except he didn't, because he's not real.
These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, when Jehovah God made earth and heaven, and no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For Jehovah God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to work the ground. But a mist went up from the earth, and watered the whole surface of the ground. Jehovah God formed with the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And Jehovah God planted a garden in Eden in the east. In the east of what? In the east of the world? There is no east of the world. It's a sphere, idiot. And there he put the man who he informed. And out of the ground Jehovah God caused to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. As well as the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went forth from Eden to water the garden. And from there it divided and became four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. Pishon? Speak English. <laughs> it is the one that goes around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bdellum and Onyx Stone are there. And the land of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that goes around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Hittakel. It is the one that goes east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. And Jehovah God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And Jehovah God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree and garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of knowing the difference between good and evil, of it you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Which, like, I mean, yeah, no, no, knowing what the difference between good and evil is, that's not, that's not important information. Ugh, idiot. And Jehovah God said, It is not good for the man to be home alone. I will make him a helper as his counterpart. And Jehovah God formed from the ground every animal of the field and every bird of heaven, and he brought them to the man. To see what he would call them. And whatever the man called any living animal, that was its name. And the man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of heaven and to every animal of the field. But for Adam there was no counterpart. He was alone. Man. And Jehovah God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs just out of his body and closed up the flesh in its place. And Jehovah God built the rib, which he had taken from the man, into a woman, and brought her to the man, and the man said, This time is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, because out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man shall leave his father, and a mother shall cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That's sex for, like, you <laughs> virgins. I'm a virgin. I'm 14. Don't shame me for being a virgin. I'm 14. That's creepy. And both the man and his wife were naked and were not ashamed of it. <laughs> now, the serpent was more crafty than every other animal of the field which Jehovah God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you shall not eat at the tree of the garden? Because, you know, the snake questions God because he's a smart atheist like me. And the woman said to the serpent of the fruit and the trees of the garden we may eat, but the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden God has said you shall not eat it, nor you shall touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You shall surely not die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will become like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to her eyes and that the tree was desired to make one self wise, she took its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And they heard the sound of Jehovah God walking about in the garden in the cool of that day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Jehovah God among the trees of the garden. And Jehovah God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I'm naked, so I hid myself. Which is like, completely understandable, God. God. And he said, Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you to not eat? And the man said, The woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Bitches be great. 
And Jehovah God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And Jehovah God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than all the animals of the field. Upon your stomach you will go, and of dust you will eat of all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman in your seed and her seed, and he will bruise you on the head, but you will bruise him on the heel. Basically what he's saying is snakes don't have legs now. <laughs> To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and childbearing. <laughs> and your desire will be to your husband and he will rule over you. <laughs> childbirth is pain. Childbirth is only painful because God said so. Maybe it's painful because you're pushing a watermelon out of your butt. And Adam... And to Adam, he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree concerning which I have commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat it all the days of your life, and thorns and thistles it will bring forth for you, and you will eat the herb of the field. By the sweat of your face you will eat bread until you return to the ground, because from it you were taken, for dust you are, and for dust you shall return. And the man called his wife's name Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. I feel like that was lost in translation a bit, or maybe it's just all not real. And Jehovah God made for Adam and for his wife coats of skins and clothed them. And Jehovah God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Jehovah God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned, into, which turned in every direction to guard the way to the Tree of Life. I didn't actually know that the Garden of Eden was guarded by a flaming sword made by God that points in every direction at once. It's actually super rad. Too bad it's not real. Chapter 4 And the man knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain, and said, I have acquired a man, Jehovah. And again she gave birth to his brother, Abel. And Abel was a tender of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the course of time, Cain brought an offering to Jehovah from the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought an offering from the firstlings of his flock, that is, from their fat portions. Heh, <laughs> fat shaming. And Jehovah had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. And Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. And Jehovah said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your countenance fell? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and his desire is for you, but you must rule over him. And Cain said to Abel his brother, Let us go into the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Then Jehovah said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you till the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. And Cain, he said to Jehovah, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Now you have driven me out of this day from the face of the ground, and from your face I will be hidden, and I will be a fugitive and a wanderer of the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Who's gonna find you? There's, like, you... Your parents are the only other humans alive. Like, there's no other people. <laughs> and Jehovah said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain... Vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold, and Jehovah put a mark on Cain so that anyone who found him would not strike him dead. And Cain went forth from the presence of Jehovah and dwelt in the land of Nod, east of Eden, even easter than the eastward Eden. And Cain knew his wife. What? <laughs> and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch. Where did he get a wife? Where did he get, where did he get a wife? It's a plot hole, because it's not real. And he, and she, conceived and gave birth to Enoch. 
And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And Erod was born to Enoch, and Erod begot Mehojuel, and Mehojuel begot Methusahel, and Methusahel begot Lamech. And Lamech took two wives for himself. The name of the first was Adah, and the name of the second was Zillah. Now, having more than one wife is wrong, because I don't have any girlfriends at all, so he should give me one. And Adah gave birth to Jabal. And he was the father of those who dwell in tents and raise cattle. And the brother's name was Jubal. And he was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. And Zillah also gave birth to Tubalcain, the forger of every cutting instrument of bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubalcain was Nama. And Lamech said to his wives, Ida and Zillah, listen to my voice, O wives of Lamech, hearken to my speech, for I have slain a man for wounding me, even a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. C what? Wouldn't curses get weaker generationally? My god, it's not real. And Adam knew his wife again. Wait, they, they skipped eleven generations and none of them are dead? Whoa. And she gave birth to a son and called his name Seth, for she said, God has appointed me in another seed instead of Abel, because Cain slew him. <laughs> And to Seth a son was born, and he called his name Enosh. And at that time, men began to call upon the name of Jehovah. Chapter 5 This is the book of the generations of Adam. When God created Adam, he made him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them, and he called their name Adam. Actually, he only called one of their names Adam. But on the day they were created, and Adam lived 130 years, which is longer than the world record, and begot a son in his likeness according to his image, and he called his name Seth, which we just heard about. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begot more sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. And Seth lived 105 years and begot Enosh. And Seth lived after he had begotten Enosh 807 years because he begot more sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years, and he died. And Enosh lived 90 years and begot Kenan. And Enosh lived after he had begotten Kenan 815 years, and he begot more sons and daughters. And after all the days of Enosh were 905 years, and he died. Death time. And Kenan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalel. And Kenan lived after he had begotten Mahalalel at 840 years, and he begot more sons and daughters. And all of the days of Kenan were 910 years, and he died. And Mahalalel lived 65 years and begot Jared. I have a buddy named Jared. And Mala Mahalalel lived after he had begotten Jared 830 years, and he begot more sons and daughters, and after all the days of Mahalalol were 895 years, and he died. And Jared lived 262 years and begot Enoch, and Jared lived after he had begotten Enoch 800 years, and he begot more sons and daughters, and all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. And Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah, and Enoch walked with God after he had begotten Methuselah 300 years and he begot more sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived 187 years and begot Lamech. Again, a different Lamech. Generational gap. And Methuselah lived after he had begotten Lamech 782 years, and he begot more sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died, which is the world record right now. And Lamech lived 182 years and begot a son. You cannot have a son at age 182. That's just not real, idiot. And he called his name Noah, saying, This one will give us rest from our work and from the toil of our hands, which come because of the ground which Jehovah has cursed. And Lamech lived after he had begotten Noah 595 years, and he begot more sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were 777 years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham and Japheth. Death round over. Chapter 6. 
And when man began to multiply on the surface of the ground, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took wives for themselves, for all whom they chose. And Jehovah said, My spirit will not strive with man forever, for he indeed is flesh, so his days will be a hundred and twenty years. So he just cut everyone's lifespan by like eight hundred years. Dick move, dude. The Nephilim were on the earth in those years, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they gave birth to children to them. These were the mighty men who were the old men of renown. And Jehovah said that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts in his heart was only evil continually. And Jehovah repented that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him in his heart. And Jehovah said, I will blot out the man who I am created from the surface of the ground, from man to beast to creeping things to the birds of heaven, for I repent that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of Jehovah. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence, and God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all the flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and now I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, and you shall make rooms in the ark, and shall cover it within and without with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make an opening for light for the ark, and you shall finish it up to a cubit from the top. And you shall put the entrance of the ark in its side, and you shall make it with lower second and third stories. And now I am about to bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy from under all heaven flesh which is the breath of life. Even the thing that is on the earth shall die. Except fish, idiot. Do you repent the fish, but you repent every other animal? Fuck off. And every kind of living thing of all flesh, too, of every kind you shall bring into the ark to preserve them alive with you. They shall be male and female, because no gay animals are allowed. Of the birds according to their kind, and of the cattle according to their kind, and of every creeping thing of the ground according to its kind, two of every kind will come to you and in order to stay them alive. And for your part, take some of every kind of food that is edible. <laughs> every food. And gather it to yourself. It will be for food and you for them. Noah did this according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. Chapter 7 Then Jehovah said to Noah, Come into the ark, and you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean animal you shall take with you seven pairs, a male and its female, and of the females that are not clean, two may of all the birds of heaven, seven pairs, male and female, to preserve their offspring alive on the surface of all the earth. For in seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living being that I have made I will blot out from the surface of the ground. Because he's edgy. And Noah did according to all that Jehovah commanded him. And Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps upon the ground. Two by two they came into the ark to Noah, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. And after the seven days the waters of the flood came up upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that very day all the springs of the great deep burst open, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and on that very same day Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons, entered the ark. They and every animal according to its kind, and all the cattle according to their kind, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every bird, every winged creature. And they went into the ark to Noah, two by two of all flesh, which was the breath of life. And for those who went in, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded them. And Jehovah shut the door behind him. And the flood was on the earth forty days, and the waters increased, and the lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. And the waters prevailed and increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went about on the surface of the waters. And when the waters had prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, all the high mountains that were under the entire heaven were covered. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits higher once all the mountains were covered, and all the flesh that moved upon the earth expired, birds and cattle and 
animals and every swarming thing that swarms upon the earth and all mankind. Everything in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit life and of all of that was on the dry land died. Thus he blotted out every living being that was upon the surface of the ground, from man to beast to creeping things to the birds of heaven, and they were blotted out from the earth, and the only Noah was left, and those who were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth one hundred and fifty days. Chapter 8 and God remembered Noah and all the animals and all the cattle that were with him on the ark. And God made a wine pass over the earth, and the so waters subsided. The springs of the deep and the windows of heaven also stopped, and the rain from the heavens was restrained. And as the waters receded steadily from upon the earth, so at the end of a hundred and fifty days water began to diminish. And the ark came to a rest in the seventh month of the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters diminished steadily until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. And at the end of the forty days, Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent out the raven, and it went out, going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. And he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had abated from the surface of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, so she returned to him to the ark. For the waters were on the surface of the whole earth. There's no ground anywhere. Dang. And he put out his hand and took her and brought her to himself in the ark. And he waited yet another seven days. And again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came to him towards the evening. And there in her beak was a fleshly plucked, was a freshly plucked, plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had abated from the earth, and he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove, and she did not return to him again. And in the six hundred first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the water was dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and saw that now the surface of the ground was dry, and in the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. I don't know why we need the specific dates. I don't know what date you mean. The year six hundred? What the fuck? All right. And God spoke to Noah, saying, Go forth from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you, because you can bring out with you every living thing that is with you, of all flesh, birds and cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. They may swarm on the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. So Noah went forth, as well as his sons and his wives and his sons' wives. His sons' wives didn't even do shit to be good. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird, everything that moves upon the earth went forth from the ark according to their families. And Noah built an altar to Jehovah and took every clean beast of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And Jehovah smelled the satisfying fragrance. <laughs> and Jehovah said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground on the account of man, for the imagination of the man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor I ever again smite every living thing as I have done. Throughout all the days that earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat and summer and winter and so So God's not going to kill the planet ever again because he's not real. Lol. Chapter 9 and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply to fill the earth. And the fear of you and the terror and of you shall be upon every animal of the earth and upon every bird of heaven, upon everything that creeps onto the ground and on all of the fish of the sea into your hand they are delivered. Every morning thing that lives shall be food for you, just as I gave you the green herb the weed. So I have given you everything. But flesh with its life, that is, its blood, you shall not eat. Don't eat things that are alive. And indeed, your lifeblood I will require. From every animal I will require from it. And from every man and from every man's brother I will require the life of man. Whoever shed man's blood and my, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God he made man. And you be fruitful and multiply. Abound on the earth and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, and I myself now establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you, and with every living thing that is with you, the birds, the cattle, and every animal of earth with you, of all that came out of the ark, every animal of the earth. And I establish my covenant with you, that never again will all flesh be cut off by waters of the flood, and never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Jesus Christ, you repeat so much shit, God. Or, fuck. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I am making between me and you and for every living animal that is with you for perpetual generations. I set my bow between the clouds, and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. And when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living animal of all flesh, and never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow will be between the clouds, and I will look up 
upon it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living animal of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Now the sons of Noah who came forth from the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth, and... Ham was the father of Canaan, and these three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was spread over. And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank the wine and became drunk, and he uncovered himself inside his tent. <laughs> And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, and they walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were turned backwards so that they did not see their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and learned what his youngest son had done to him. And he said, Curse be Canaan! A servant of servants shall be him to his brothers. And he said, Blessed be Jehovah, the God of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant, and may God enlarge to Feth, and let him dwell in the tents of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and of all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. So God, like, I mean, Noah sold his grandson into slavery for walking in on him naked. And I think that's gonna be it for today. Thank you. God's not real.